What's going on everyone? Gormy here. Apologize for the voice, still recovering from being sick. So today we have got something called Order 66, which is a 442 tactic that absolutely blew me away. I was trying to create my own version of what was last year the Phantom Menace, but this year I have gone ahead, created my own version and called it Order 66. Very, very solid tactic. Tested it out with, I believe, five teams. So we'll be going over all the results with those teams here today in today's video. Now, before we do get into today's video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Helps the channel out big time, especially getting into the YouTube algorithm. So definitely please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you do enjoy today's video. Also, I'll be linking the tactic down below in the Discord uh, that is linked in the description. That is where you guys can download this tactic along with the set pieces that were used with it as well. But yeah, without further ado, let's see how these teams executed Order 66. All right, so here we are with Order 66, we start off with an advanced forward on attack up top, which shoot more often. We've got a deep line forward on attack as well, which shoot more often. The advanced playmaker on support that is behind them roams from his position and moves into the channels. The inverted winger on support on the left side crosses more often and the crosses are aimed at the far post and he roams from his position. The inverted winger on the right side crosses more often and also crosses are aimed at the far post and runs from his position as well. We've got a deep line playmaker on defend, takes more risks and tackles harder. You got two complete wingbacks on support, both cross more often and their crosses are aimed at center, so towards the strikers and the advanced playmaker, whereas the inverted wingers are trying to hit each other on either side of the four posts or if the deep line forward or advanced forward are kind of lurking at the far post as well. Then we have the central defenders on defend, both with tackle harder and the sweep keeper on support was left as is with take more risks. We played with a positive mentality. When we're in possession, we played fairly wide. We passed into space and overlapped on the left and the right. We worked the ball into the box, had shorter passing directness and a higher tempo. Now, when we were in transition, we counterpressed and countered, distributed quickly to the fullbacks and the center backs, aka distributing to the defense. And then out of possession, we had a much higher line of engagement for the offense, higher defensive line, more often trigger press, aka pressing intensity on more often, and then prevent short goalkeeper distribution. Now, this tactic very, very solid overall. The corner set pieces are set up like this on defense on the right and the left. And then in the attack, I'm actually blocking it. Give me one sec. All right, shock myself there in the bottom right. So it is set up like this on the left and the right. We then have free kicks in defense on the right and the left. And then in the attack from the left and the right. And there are different ones for small chances shot wide and deep they'll all be attached to this tactic so you guys will be able to switch it up however you guys would like and then the throw-ins are short throw-ins but i hear that long throw-ins are back so we will be trying to implement long throw-ins into a tactic here very very soon but yeah let's see how fulham performed in the competitions all right so here we are with Fulham, Skybet Championship, they won the league. So going straight back up on 103 points, very, very solid with that 33 wins, 4 draws, 9 losses, 103 points, 52 goal differential, very, very solid. They get they did get knocked out in the fourth round of the FA Cup by Chelsea, and they got knocked out in the second round by Southampton and the Carabao Cup. But getting into how they did team overview-wise, scored the most goals in the league with 95 goals, which is very impressive. They were tied in second for most shots. A few shots against, they were in seventh. Best pass completion, most possession. Best pass completion, they were not in. But most possession, they were in eighth with 51%. Most tackles won, they were not in. Most dribbles made, however, they were. With 633, quite a bit. So very happy with that. Coming in sixth. 
most shutouts. They were in third with 18. Fewest conceded, 43. They were tied in third with Blackpool. And then player overview-wise, Mitrovic had the most goals in the league with 23 goals. Most assists, we've got Harry Wilson with 17, Anthony Nacker with 11, and Bobby Dekardova reed with 10. Most shots, Alexander Mitrovic had the most shots in the league, and Tosin Artabio had the most player of the match performances in the league with 11. Most key passes, Harry Wilson with 144. Best pass completion we were not in, nor were we in most tackles won or dribbles made, but shutouts we were. Paulo Gazaniga with uh, 15, coming in fifth, and then Fuse conceded he came in third, only allowing 27. And then looking at the squad overall, our top goal scorers were Alexander Mitrovic and Alfie Mawson. Alfie Mawson with 13, one of those main players from the corner set pieces. Then Alexander Mitrovic with 24, who would be on the far post with those corner set pieces. And he is very, very good. You can also move them around to wherever you want your aerial ability players. But he performed very, very well. And then our big-time playmakers were Harry Wilson with 18, Anthony Knocker with 11, and Bobby Decker, Dova, Reed with 10. Get into the Data Hub for general performance. They performed very, very well. Uh, goals per game, two goals per game. XG at 1.76. Conceded per game, under one, almost at one, but it was under one. Expected goals against per game, under one. Shots per game, 16.28. Shots on target ratio, 42.59%. So if that could be a little bit higher, they would have probably scored over 100 goals in the league. The best pass completion in the league, not best pass completion in the league, but they were up there. Uh, they had 87.85%, which was around the average, uh, 0.22 fewer than uh, what the other clubs averaged throughout the league. And then tackles one ratio is 78.85%. So with better defensive players, they definitely would have been up there for tackles one. But very, very happy with how they performed with this tactic with winning the league. Yes, it got knocked out in the fourth round, but to Chelsea – Got knocked out by Southampton uh, in the second round in the Carabao Cup. But having 103 points in the championship is not an easy thing to do. Very, very tough league. And Fulham made it look easy with this tactic. But now let's see how the teams in the Premier League performed with this tactic. All right, so here we are in the Prem. The two clubs that we tested it with were Manchester United and Brentford. So getting into the competitions for Man U. They ended up winning the league with 93 points, four more points than Liverpool and Leeds. Leeds having a phenomenal year with 89 points. That's incredible. Um, they got knocked out in the first round by Barcelona in the Champions League, so disappointing there. Got knocked out in the quarterfinal by Man City in the FA Cup, but they did win the Carabao Cup. So domestic double, I'm pretty sure fans would be happy with that, especially with the Premier League title, with the way things are going with Manchester United currently. But they performed very, very well. Let's see how Brentford did. So Brentford, they finished down here in 13th on 44 points. Not the best. Uh, they had some hiccups and kind of hit a rough patch. But despite that rough patch, having those hiccups and finishing 13th, they're runners-up in the Carabao Cup to Manchester United. So, I mean, overall, very solid seasons from both teams. Very happy with it. Team overview-wise, Manchester United had 110 goals in the league. Next highest was 83. Brentford in 7th with 59. Most shots for both clubs are in. Few shots against, Man U is in. Best pass completion and most possession, neither club was in, nor for most tackles won. But dribbles made, both clubs in there. Man U with 600 and Brentford with 554, very solid. Got Man U in there for most shutouts, coming in fifth with 13. And few is conceded in fifth with 43 goals conceded. Then we get into the player overview. Most goals, Ronaldo with the golden boot. 34 goals, 11 higher than Romelu Lukaku, finished in second. And tied in second is Mason Greenwood with 23. Kid is an absolute stud. Ivan Tony tied in six with 17. Most assists, we've got Bruno Fernandez. With 22 assists, Shaman Godos with 13, Luke Shaw with 12, and Mads Roarslev with 12. 
Very, very solid assist numbers there. Ronaldo and Rafael Veron in four most shots. Most part of the match performances, Ronaldo in third with eight. Rafael Veron with seven. Luke Shaw with six. Bruno Fernandez also with six. Most key passes, Bruno Fernandez on the cusp of 200 key passes. That's absolutely phenomenal. And then you've got Luke Shaw with 106. Best pass completion we were not in, nor were we in for most tackles. Most dribbles made, however, we were. Rico Henry with 133 and Aaron Wan-Bissaka with 125. Usually Aaron Wan-Bissaka is a very defensive uh, fullback, but in this case he tended to be a little bit more offensive. Then we've got David De Gea in for most shutouts, coming in fifth with 13, and he was in eighth, allowing 41 goals on the season. Seeing the top goal scorers from Brentford, Ivan Tony with 21 goals in the league. Very happy with that. And Pontus Janssen with nine. He was the main target for those corner set pieces. And we have got 16 assists from Godos and 12 from Rorislev. Goal wise with Manchester United, we have got 49 from CR7. Absolutely phenomenal there. 31 from Mason Greenwood. 15 from Harry Maguire. And 14 from Rafael Varane. So both center backs contributing in a big time way. And then assist wise, we've got 27 from Bruno Fernandez, 17 from Luke Shaw, 15 from Aaron Wambasaka, 14 from CR7, 11 from Jane Sancho, and 11 from Marcus Rashford. So overall, team was absolutely lights out. Looking at the data hub, goals per game. Absolutely light years above what the rest of the league was doing. Same with XG. Conceded per game, they were conceding 1.13, so definitely could do better there. Expected goals against per game was under 1, though. Shots per game, almost 21 shots a game. They had shots on target ratio of 46.98, so almost 47, closing on that 50% mark. Pass completion ratio, 88.32. Then tackles one, ratio 79.79. So definitely could do a little bit of improvement in those two areas, but everywhere else they were pretty, pretty solid. Uh, Now let's see how Brentford did in their general performance. All right, so Brentford definitely could have improved in quite a few different areas of their game. Like I said, they kind of slipped up throughout the season, but still got to be a runners-up in the Carabao Cup. Now, they had 1.55 goals per game. Their XG was 1.45. Conceded per game, 1.55. So basically averaging a draw a game. Uh, expected goals against was 1.55. Shots per game, 14. Shots on target ratio, 44.92%. Uh, almost at that 45% range. Pass completion ratio at 87.59. And tackles one ratio at 76.99. Basically 77%. So they definitely could have improved in a few areas, but being that they're a club that was freshly promoted and just being able to stay up and getting to a cup final in their first season up, I think that Brentford fans would definitely take that. And man, you fans would definitely take winning the league and a domestic cup as well with how things are currently going with them. But now let's see how our two German clubs performed with this tactic. All right, so here we are in Germany. Borussia Dortmund and VfB Stuttgart is who we tested this tactic with. Now, both clubs did very, very well in Germany. VfB Stuttgart had some trouble at one point. Uh, I checked the test like midway through. They were struggling, uh, but they ended up just kicking ass the rest of the way, finished in fourth place, as you guys can see there. Borussia Dortmund winning the league on the last day as well. They got knocked out in the quarterfinal by PSG. They won the DP Pokal, so a domestic double for Borussia Dortmund. We'll definitely take that. And then the German Super Cup, they are runners up. Like I said, VFB Stuttgart finishing in fourth. Seeing how both teams did in the team overview, Borussia Dortmund with 97 goals in the league and VFB Stuttgart with 47. Stuttgart was very interesting. They didn't score a heck of a lot of goals. Uh, but they they made sure they got the job done and were able to finish in a Champions League spot. So it's absolutely unreal. Most shots, Bruce U. Dortmund were in second. Few shots against, they were in third. Best pass completion, most possession, and most tackles one we are not in. 
But both clubs, however, are in most dribbles made once again. Borussia Dortmund in second with 545, and in fourth, VFB Stuttgart with 464. Most shoutouts, Borussia Dortmund in third with 13, VFB Stuttgart in sixth with 11, and then Borussia Dortmund in third, allowing 32 goals throughout the season. Player overview-wise, most goals. We've got Erling Haaland winning the Golden Boot, 39 league goals. Dude is an absolute machine. we got Daniel Malin with 15. Most assists, we've got Marco Royce with 18. Thorgan Hazard with 14. Borna Sosa with 12, who I might add is absolutely insane. He is very, very good. Rafael Guerrero with 10. And Daniel Dadavi with 9. Most shots, Erling Haaland is in second. Most player of the matches, Erling Haaland in second once again with 8. Most key passes, Thorgan Hazard with 132. Marco Royce with 128 and Borna Sosa with 117. We then do not have anyone at best pass completion or most tackles won. Most dribbles made, however, we do. Borna Sosa with 126. Rafael Guerrero with 105. Most shutouts, Gregor Kobel in third with 13. Florian Miller in fifth with 12. Fewest conceded, Gregor Kobel with 28 coming in third. And in seventh, Florian Mueller with 43. And I just want to highlight this right here. Borna Sosa completed 121 crosses. That is huge for this tactic, having someone that can do that. Uh, so very, very happy with how both clubs did. Going into the squad for Borussia Dortmund, goal-wise, Erling Haaland had 57 goals in 51 games with an expected goals of 43. So he's absolutely just nuts. Daniel Malin with 20. Matt Hummels with 13. Dan Axel Zagadu with 11. Dan Axel Zagadu, very, very good player for corners right now at this stage in the beta. Um, he is a very, very good player so far. And then assist numbers wise, we got Marco Royce with 27. Thorgan Hazard with 17. Rafael Guerrero with 12. Giovanni Reina with 10. And Daniel Malin with 10. Now let's see how VFB Stuttgart did. All right, so goal-wise, this is what I was saying. VIP Stuttgart, they were kind of weird in the sense of, like, they didn't score a whole heck of a lot, but they still finished in fourth. They did very, very solid with this tactic and made sure that they exceeded all expectations expected of them because I will show you guys this actually really quickly. So going to the season preview, VIP Stuttgart was predicted to finish in 14th, 101 to win the league, and they finished in fourth which is absolutely amazing. But goal-wise, Anton had nine, Marmouche with eight, and then it was six, five, five, five. I mean, they did not score a whole heck of a lot assist-wise, though. Borna Sosa was integral to this team. I don't think they would have had the season they did if it wasn't for him. Borna Sosa with 13 assists, and then Didavi with nine, and then it falls off from there. But overall, VIP Stuttgart performed very, very solid. They got the job done. Finished in fourth, blowing away all expectations set of them. And then Borussia Dortmund winning the league and the DFB Pokal, uh, which is my favorite domestic competition. I absolutely love the DFB Pokal, and that trophy is beautiful. Uh, but, yeah, let's see how Order 66 is executed in-game.
right, so that does it here today for Order 66, the 442. Very, very happy with how this turned out. I was really looking forward to testing this out and creating it. Um, and, I mean, it, it definitely did not disappoint. So the uh, link to download this will be in the description and the Discord. That is where you guys will be able to to take it and put it into your tactics folder and be able to use it whenever you guys would like. I will also be linking the set pieces in there for you guys to use as well. It will be attached to this tactic, but uh, if you guys want to use it for whatever save you guys use throughout the year, I will definitely be putting that there for you guys to utilize. But with that being said, if you guys did happen to enjoy today's video, please feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, have a good one. Bye.